Welcome to Butter No Parsnips. Every week on Butter No Parsnips, your hosts Emily Moyers and Kyle Imperator take you on an adventure through the weird, wacky, wonderful, and sometimes even wicked world of one wayside word. Strange characters, delightful bits, and general joyousness abound. Join them as they test each other's etymological expertise. Okay, pals and palsarinos, this is WBLI243. <laughs> it's not. This is Butter No Parsnips. Welcome. Hey. Yeah, hey, I'm Kyle. This is... I'm Emily. It's good to talk to you for the first time in a week, Kyle. It is good to talk to you for the first time in a week. Uh, just so you uh, listeners at home know, Emily and I aren't friends. We yeah. don't communicate. No. Except to record this podcast. That's right. So we're going to start by catching up. And the way that we catch up is through a word. Emily, throw a word at me. All right, Kyle. Your word today is scrofula. No, it's not. I quit. Good night. Your word is scrofula. S-C-R-O-F-U-L-A. And it's pronounced scrofula. Yeah. And I know it is because... <sighs> For the first several days that I was researching this, in my brain it was scrofula, and Absolutely. then I realized I was incorrect. The common pronunciation is scrofula. Oh my god. Okay, so you remember Men in Black? Yeah. Okay. Good so start. You remember... you're, you're on the right track, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, good. That's great. So you remember when Jay kicks the guy in his crotch, <laughs> and Kay is like... Jay, he's a ball chinian. Yeah. And and he pulls it down. Um Pil pulls his shirt down and then yeah. like punches him in the neck. Yeah. Is this a ball chinian that is like the Dracula of ball chinians? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Scrofula. Scrofula. Do give us a scrofula impression. <laughs> yeah, okay. <clears throat> Blah. <laughs> I want to suck. Oh, no, Mm-mm. can't go there. <laughs> can't do it. <laughs> okay, scrofula. Scrofula. Is it? Is it like a medical term? Kyle, literally, you got it in one. It is a medical term. It is a medical term. I, I, literally, when I wrote these notes, I was like, all right, I'm not gonna make Kyle guess exactly what it is. So I'll just say if he gets close enough by saying it's a medical term. Oh my god! But since you got it so quick. What what kind of medical term is it? Is it referring to some sort of abnormality, like a tumor of some sort or a problem with something in the body? It is a problem with something. It is a problematic thing, a scrofula. Oh, I don't yeah. like that. Well, this. I wouldn't say, I, I don't think you would say a scrofula. I think you would oh. just say scrofula. So something's been, this is, oh, so this is a noun. It is a noun. It can, can it, it can go, it can, the adjectival form is scrofulous. No, it's not. <laughs> no, you can't do this to me. Scrofulous. Come on. <laughs> like O-U-S, scrofulous? Yeah. It can't be made into a verb, can it? I, I don't know how. Can you scrofulate? Ugh. No. <laughs> just, just, you can't as in I won't allow it. <laughs> <laughs> Banned. Canceled. <laughs> No scrofuling. Okay, so something can be scrofulous. Or a, a person can be scrofulous. A person can be scrofulous. Yeah. Is it is it Latin? It is. It is Latin. Whew. Okay, I don't know. What is it? It is a disease. That is sort of what oh. I was dancing around. It's, you would say you have scrofula. Whoa. Yeah. So scrofula is a very old term. It, it originated around 1400. So like the exact medical definition of it has kind of changed and solidified over time. But essentially, it is a disease that involves swelling of the lymph nodes in the neck. Okay. Doesn't that just happen with most colds? But to a more extreme degree, I oh, think. Oh, <laughs> okay. Oh, gross. Yeah. So scrofula or scrofulae in the plural in Latin means little pigs. Literally. Aww. Um, we don't know for sure Aww. why this term is used to describe a disease. It could be that people thought pigs were particularly prone to this disease. Or it could be that people with really bad swollen neck glands kind of looked like 
pigs. Oh, I mean, that's just mean. That's Which, like yeah, kicking that's someone rough. when they're down. <laughs> that's rough. I wrote in my notes, oof. <laughs> oof. <laughs> I'm confused as to how people would even be like, oh, the pig's scrofulous again. <laughs> I, well, I guess if a pig's neck got swollen. They have necks? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so today it is... Its official term is mycobacterial cervical lymphadenitis. Oh, so it is still like a thing that we talk about today. Well, it is still a condition. It is often a result of tuberculosis. Oh. And actually, before the scientific community understood that, scrofula and tuberculosis were basically like interchangeable terms. Interesting. Yeah, because like, who knew what medicine was? (laughs) Well, clearly. Yeah. I mean, still today. Yeah. I'm sure there's some people out there who's like, well, he's scrofulitic. Yeah. But the disease also was used to be known as King's Evil. Have you heard of this? No. It is called King's Evil because it was once believed that this disease could be cured by the touch of a king. Oh. Are there instances of people being cured of scrofula? There are kings? so many instances. This was a massive thing. It was called the royal touch or the king's touch. Oh my gosh. English and French monarchs believed that because they were the gods chosen to, to be monarchs and lead their country, they were also gifted the ability to cure the sick. Well, I mean, that's just true. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, last week I had a cold and I went straight to President Biden and he <laughs> cured me right up. No, no, no. He's not a king. <laughs> it's fair. No, I did have to go to prince charles he's not a king either (laughs) come on emily you can't name a living king Uh, can you (sighs) now let's sit and think about this (laughs) (laughs) yeah so this this concept called the royal touch it's fascinating it is believed to have started around the 1200s but it is hard to tell exactly when because the French say that a French king started doing it, and the English say that an English king started doing it before him, and they can't really agree on who did it first. I, is, are they passing blame? They wanted to have the credit of, like, no, our king oh. had the divine gift first. Gotcha, you gotcha. Know? And it was originally, you know, in around the 12, 1300s, it was done to cure, like, a bunch of different diseases and conditions. But around the 16th century, it became more exclusively a cure for scrofula, I guess because scrofula was particularly rampant. I imagine also the kings were just getting tired of dealing with, like, many things. They right, just wanted yeah. to keep their mind on, just like, uh, limited to scrofula. Yeah. I can't deal with the others today. Yes, and they often also limited it to certain days. They would do it usually of at course. coronations or on holy days, particularly Easter, apparently. And there was like a whole ritual around it, like thousands and thousands of people. I mean, it depended on the case, like hundreds or thousands would show up to all be cured by the royal touch. And there was a whole like procession about it. (laughs) I mean, lovely. Was there like a common ceremony that was followed to do that? Or did they just touch people? There there was um, a ceremony. I don't have a description of the French procedure, but I did find a, a description of the English procedure. And I think it was kind of like it, it was a general thing at first, but King Henry the Seventh sort of made an official ritual that was like written down. And, you know, this is the way that we're going to do it. things. And it involved first the monarch would touch or stroke the face or neck of the afflicted. And mm-hmm. then they would hang oh. a coin around the afflicted person's neck. And then passages from the Gospels of Mark and John were read and prayers were offered. Very kind. Yes. And the coins were these special gold coins that depicted a ship on one side and an image of the archangel Michael slaying a dragon on the other. And thus the coins were commonly known as angels because Michael was on there. And not because of the dragon. <laughs> because That's of the not dragon, the important part of the which, coin. <laughs> which I consider an angel. Yeah. <laughs> the coins were pierced and put on a string and the afflicted were told to keep it around their necks at all times to, I guess, ward off the disease. But also... They were very valuable because they were made of gold. So people just would sell them sometimes. (laughs) Of course. Yeah. And it was like basically like an ancient collector's item was was angels. Oh, my God. 
Yeah. So it was like those infomercials you have for like presidential coins. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That they just sell to anybody. Like, this is going to be worth something, but it's really just a waste of money. Yeah, they they produce them by the thousands. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God, what do you think an, a medieval infomercial for one of those coins would be like? Well, it starts off with, hear ye, hear ye. <laughs> Hear ye, hear ye, Bilious Maze here with another incredible product to make your life easier. Has Scrofula got you down? Yeah. Holy shit. Sorry. Sorry. Wow. Oh my god. It's bad, right? Yeah, it's bad. Wow. That is... I'm not happy about it either. Yeah, no, you shouldn't be. Oh, oh my god. Are you here to help? Yeah, yes. Sorry. Jesus Christ. Okay, wow. Like, someone warn me next time. Anyway... Bilious Maze here with the magic power of angel coins. Angel coins? Six feet, buddy. Okay, and yes, angel coins. Is is your neck covered in open wounds? Yeah. I I know, I know. This part is just for me. You don't need to respond to this part. Go over there. Uh, Okay. Okay. Anyway, neck covered in open wounds, angel coins, and you're scrofulous no more. Pustules got you pig-like? Angel coins, and you're scrofulous no more. You're a walking horror show? Angel coins, and you're scrofulous no more. That last one seemed unnecessary. Now you're probably wondering, Bilious, how can I get an angel coin? Easy. All of this can be yours with just one scheduled visit to the sole ruler of all life in the region, the king. That sort of seems difficult. You have got to stop sneaking up on me. It's easy, though. You get your time in with the king, he touches your face, and angel coins. You're scrofulous no more. But, like, how do I schedule? Angel coins. Get yours today. Angel coins are not scientifically proven to cure scrofula. We're not sure anything was quote-unquote scientifically proven during this period of history. They literally had kings touching people's faces to cure diseases. In this way, angel coins are commemorative and not to be used to any practical effect. Please don't sue us. Yeah, so that was like the official ritual, uh, and then certain monarchs would make little changes to it. Queen Elizabeth I would make the sign of the cross over the person's head. King James I, who was supposedly a very squeamish person and also didn't particularly believe in the royal touch, he wouldn't actually touch the person's neck. He would just of sort of wave not. his hand over it. <laughs> I can't, I mean, good for him. Yeah. That is crazy that any would be like, yeah, come let me touch your scrofulous neck. <laughs> let me stroke this, this swollen gland. Ah, uh, oozing? Let me get uh, my hands in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I will just at this point warn you, Kyle, and everyone listening, don't Google it because you don't want to see. <laughs> you don't want to see what scrofula looks like. And I know that you. now that I've said it, some people are going to, but don't. Everybody, actually, in fact, you are, none of you have a choice. I am all direct messaging pictures of scrofula to you (laughs) if you're listening to this your life is over like you're gonna be scrofulated you will never unsee yeah Yeah. but yeah it it did vary how much each monarch believed in the healing power of the royal touch and thus some of them practiced it more than others it was generally practiced a lot more in france than in england and it was generally more of a catholic belief than a protestant one Those darn Catholics. Yeah, which I think kind of makes sense because my perception is that France is more Catholic and England is more Protestant, Protestant, Church of England, right? Yeah. I mean, I found out yesterday that Catholics are still banned from the line of succession in England. Really? You have to be Protestant. You have to be like like Church of England? Yeah, and like not just Catholics, like any other religion. Mm. Jewish, Hindu, Muslim, only Protestants. God, I it's just such an ancient land. <laughs> it's really, yeah. Yeah. I mean, kind of pegging off that, like, this concept of, of the royal touch and scrofula would, like, play a role in the conflicts between Catholics and Protestants. And, and How? So, so, in France, this is so wild. So, in France, there was something called the French Wars of Religion which was during the late 16th century. It was basically like a civil war in France mm-hmm. fought between the Catholic League and the Huguenot Protestants. And this is, again, the 16th century, the height of scrofula. It is a running rampant through the streets of France and England. I- I'm just picturing, I'm picturing my Dracula 
character running through, yes, the, <laughs> running, streets, running I mean. through the streets and everyone he touches uh, becomes <laughs> diseased as he yeah, <laughs> yeah. and then he do, hates you know lightning flash thunder crash and yeah. and his his cape twirls and he vanishes into the night <laughs> <laughs> into the night in a puff of scrofulous air what animal does scrofula turn into instead of a bat well clearly he turns into a scrofulous pig <laughs> oh, and then but just, then can't just escape tr- trots off <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, God. but but during the french wars of religion the catholic league would use scrofula and the royal touch to undermine the rule of any monarch that wasn't catholic so king henry the third was a moderate he wasn't you know religious or or politically like strong-minded and he was also rumored to have same-sex lovers so the catholic lead said he doesn't have the healing touch because he's immoral he's he's doesn't have the divine gift he can't he- cure the scrofulas because he's not a moral christian so the kings had the king's touch what was it king's yeah. evil uh the the royal touch or the king's touch yeah king's evil was the name for a scrofula yes but the pope didn't i i guess not i guess it was part of being a a, a king and having the you know divine right to rule that they were given the the quote unquote divine gift to, to i mean cure the scrofulas like i feel like if you're at the point where you're telling other people who does and doesn't have the option of curing scrofula <laughs> you might as well just give that power to yourself you know i uh, well I, I mean i guess they sort of had to play to what the people believed sure and pl- because then so that was king henry the third he was succeeded by king henry the fourth who was a professed protestant and the catholic league basically said to all of you know said to the masses if you let this guy be king God will revoke his gift and people with scrofula will never be cured again. Are you going to kill all the scrofulous people? That's what they, that's like how they swayed <laughs> the you. public. And it worked because Henry IV later converted to Catholicism. Oh my God. So this, this crazy idea of, you know, kings can cure the sick with a touch swayed a French civil war. Wow. Isn't that insane? <laughs> That is insane. I mean, it's insane that this was such an important part of at least French and English history that I haven't heard of it ever. Yeah, I guess it sort of died with the practice that that people were like, let's never speak of this again. <laughs> God, I can't tell you how many scrofulous necks I touched. You gotta... <laughs> yeah, well, and in England, Elizabeth I and James I were both protestant english monarchs and were both pretty reluctant to perform the royal touch because they didn't really believe in it they thought it was all nonsense but scrofula was such a big problem and people believed in it so firmly believed in the cure so firmly that they were like under political pressure to to have these big ceremonies of oh my curing the scrofulous oh my gosh i mean imagine just being a king like live in the dream yeah. But then your bad karma yeah, then, is... then your, your, you know, your steward is like, hey, listen, you got to do this thing. It's a, you got to do this PR thing. Hey, <laughs> Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> hey. So on your, on your schedule for today. <laughs> we got, um, you're going to start with tea time, right? Yay. You love tea time. Yeah. You love tea time. Um, but then, then you... You got the scarf on touching. And then and then we'll go bowling. How's that sound? I'm sorry, what was what was that you said before bowling? The tea time? No, no, after tea time. Oh, um that would be the scarf on touching. And then I'm bowling. sorry, you keep holding your hand up in front of your face every time you go to say what that middle thing is. I think you're right about that. So I guess let's move on, Queen. Oh, okay. So I don't have anything between tea time and bowling? Nothing except the touching of the scarf and the the t- the touching of we we have to do that neck thing, huh? You got to do the neck thing. I can't stop it. I'm oh, sorry. Oh gosh, it's just I don't believe in it. I know you don't believe in it, lady. But listen, here's the deal: they'll cut your head off if you don't do it. So, oh, yeah, that's you know what? That's fair. All right. Well, you've swayed me. <laughs> so here's the thing. So you're you're. I think you asked earlier on. Why did people believe that this worked? Yes. 
the belief was held for so long because, at know. least historically, scrofula was not actually that deadly and often went into remission on its own. Good, 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 good. <laughs> so the belief was that it worked because technically... It just coincidentally, it would cure itself anyway. Oh my god. Oh so my God. I don't know how they arrived at this practice in the first place, but they 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 linked these two ideas. Emily, we have to find some disease or virus that is easily curable that nobody's ever heard of. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we yeah. gotta start selling coins and <laughs> having these sessions. I mean, we can become like at least quadrillionaires we right? could become the next billium maze <laughs> the next billium maze so the reason that i found the word scrofula in the first place was to terrify everybody yes and also because i saw king's evil as an entry in a london bill of mortality oh have you heard of the bills of mortality kyle no i have not please explain away oh my gosh so the Bills of Mortality, this is one of my favorite things in history. The mm. Bills of Mortality were papers that were printed every week in London during the 16th and 17th century, which was the height of scrofula and the royal touch being used, and mm. also the height of the plague in London, which is why the papers were printed in the first place. The papers listed the number of deaths in each parish in London and then listed all of the different causes of death that week and how many people died of each cause. They were like these little magazines that got put out every week. And weirdly enough, below all of that, they would also list, list like the price of bread for that week. Yeah, yeah. That's I mean, just it was a like, random fact that's in there. It was like a circular, you know? Yeah. You could you could get yeah. your coupons in there and also see how, uh, yeah. you know, your neighbor died. So you can find loads of these bills of mortality online. And they are incredibly entertaining to look through because, like, some of the listed cause of death are things you'd expect. Sure. There's king's evil, there's fever, there's smallpox, you know, normal things. But then yeah. there are ones like, and I quote, burnt by a fall into the fire at St. Giles in the fields. Oh my gosh. Or killed accidentally with a carbine at St. Michael Wood Street. I mean, at least it was an accident. <laughs> Yeah, I have no idea why, like, only some of them are that specific, and only some of them list the parish where it happened. <laughs> well, that's because they knew. Right. And, They you knew know, the whole story, and they were like, this needs to be heard. <laughs> the, for the annals of history, this needs to go down. Yeah, there's one that's, like, burnt in his bed. Yeah, oh, they're wild. <laughs> oh, my God. Yep, uh, Sir Thomas, he was... Um, kicked in the guts by an alpaca, <laughs> and that didn't kill him, but then he, he stumbled backwards off a cliff <laughs> yeah. and went kersplat. <laughs> went kersplat at yeah. St. Michael Wood Street. <laughs> and St. Michael Wood Street. <laughs> yeah, I, it's, it's just so funny that only a couple of them are so specific. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so there are ones like that. There are causes of death that, like, I guess were common defined terms at the time but today they're just nonsense like there's one you see a lot called griping of the guts that's a death that's a cause of death so i mean i don't know kyle what do you think that means <laughs> griping of the guts oh my god i mean oh god <laughs> i mean none of the things that i'm coming that are coming to mind are things that i want to put out in the world <laughs> Another one like that is Rising of the Lights. Wait, what was actually griping of the guts? Oh, I have no idea. There's no, we don't know. I, I know. <laughs> it's just a term in the Bills of Mortality. I have no it's clue what so that means. So funny. What was the next one? Rising of the Lights. Yeah, Rising of the Lights. I mean, that's when clearly an arsenal of alien ships <laughs> comes across the horizon. You that's know? right. Yeah, and you and just... that's just that's the last thing you see. <laughs> yeah, that's it's it. the rising the of the lights. By the rising of the lights. Sometimes the listed cause of death in these bills of mortality is just a body part. It'll just say spleen or teeth. Teeth was the teeth. cause of death. Teeth was a cause of death sometimes. <laughs> I mean, someone else's or their own. <laughs> 
I love the idea of dying from someone else's teeth. You know. Like just a bite got infected. And yeah, and I guess those are people who uh, were killed by vampires. <laughs> yes, by scrofulas. <laughs> by scrofulas. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Blah, 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 blah. That was my scrofula impersonation, right? That's good. That's good. Yeah. So uh, it's, I'm, I'm trying to build out this lore here. So Dracula, he always has to travel with like the dirt <laughs> of his homeland. What does scrofula yeah, yeah, yeah. have to travel with? <laughs> I mean, great question, Emily. I, I've i got an answer for you. You know, um, Scrofula <laughs> travels. Um, Does he travel with, like, this is going to be gross, but I'm picturing just a jar of pus. Yeah, it's not his. It's a pig's pus. Um, but from his homeland. <laughs> from, yeah, from it was like from the farm that he was raised on as a child. It was yeah. their prized pig. <laughs> A prized pig. And the pig bit him, and that's how he became Scrofula. That's how he became Scrofula. Emily, this is like... <gasps> Coming to a theater near you, uh, summer 2023. I assume they worked that fast. You think it would be a summer film? <laughs> yeah, it'd be the, uh, the smash summer blockbuster. Uh, yeah, with the beach parties in the film, I imagine. <laughs> <laughs> Serving USA. <laughs> <laughs> Scrofula on a surfboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hang ten, dude. And then he vomits in the <laughs> ocean. Just <laughs> I'm just to round out this uh, this Bill's immortality conversation. Yeah, I love these, by the way. These are so good. You can look them up online. They're fantastic to to pour through. Um, my favorite cause of death that shows up on a bunch of these Bill's immortality is they list some number of people that died quote suddenly. Just suddenly. Truly just they were alive and then they were dead. And we didn't investigate any further than that. I mean, I'm just being honest. This is how he died. It's, I saw it like he just there and gone. No more I need to know. He's dead. <laughs> what does it matter? We're in the plague. You know, journalism has come a long way. Yeah. And that that is how I discovered the term scrofula and what sent me on this this magical journey. What what are your thoughts, Kyle? Well, my thoughts are why were you looking at bills of mortality? <laughs> because it's, it's my, my immediate favorite thought. thing. <laughs> yeah, really I was hilarious. just sifting through my bills of mortality, yeah, you know. Just seeing what the causes of death were for the first week of December 1603. <laughs> You know, I, I don't think that I would have gotten to scrofula being this old of a term. For some reason to me, it sounds like a more recent med medical term. Like sure. like a late 1800s, early 1900s type of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I could see that. I mean, I guess it's tough because like a lot of medical things come from Latin. Yes, uh, yes. But I, I guess for me, I don't associate Latin medical terms with the renaissance or medieval ages right i just assumed everything back then was you know died suddenly, suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> um so i guess i'm impressed by their ability to categorize scrofula <laughs> yeah. as a separate ailment yeah as as little pigs <laughs> So now I got a quick little game for you, Kyle. I'm into it. This game is called Love in the Time of Scrofula. Oh, mm, I don't, I don't know if I like love and scrofula together. <laughs> uh, well, I was really just looking for a pun for scrofula and time because a thing that I forgot to tell you back here is that the royal touch. You know, again, they thought it worked because it would just cure itself. Right. The royal touch was practiced in England as late as the 1780s. And in France, as late as 1825. Oh, my God. So I just thought we could contextualize that crazy fact by looking at other things that happened in 1825. Absolutely. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this in the style of Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me's fill in the blank segment. Okay, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. just tell you things that happened in 1825 and you fill in the blank. Yeah, sounds good to me. So on January 25th, 1825, the U.S. Engineering College blank opened in Troy, New York. Uh, Bananatopia. Close. No. Is it like some kind of technical institute? It is. It is RPI. 
uh, oh, Rensselaer God. Polytechnic. Oh, good. Yeah. On March 24th, blank was inaugurated as the sixth U.S. president. I got to sing the song. Washington, <laughs> Adams, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, Adams, Quincy. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. got it. John Quincy Adams. On September 27th in England, locomotion number one became the first blank open to the public. A uh, nightclub. Nope. <laughs> It's where they did the locomotion for the first time. <laughs> well, I do I do have a joke written in here, which is locomotion number one, not to be confused with locomotion number five, which I assume is a mashup of Mambo number five and yeah. do the locomotion. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, it was uh, the first steam locomotive open to the public. Sure. On October 26th, the blank opened connecting the Hudson River and Lake Erie. Uh, the Erie Canal? You got it. Wow. This is the same year. Okay, yes. And this yeah, is the we're same still year in the that, same year. <laughs> that scrofula is being uh, warded against. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. By a, by a French king touching people's necks. <laughs> Stroking them. Even Stroking worse. Stroking them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And lastly, you'll get this one. You'll get this last one. Uh, on December 26th, the Decemberist uprising against blank began in Russia. Oh, that's when the, uh, the uh, uh, Romanovs. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Tsar, Tsar Nicholas the first. Yeah. Uh, and once again, just to contextualize, all of those things happened in the same year that a king in France was touching people's necks to cure an infectious disease. Amazing. Yep. And that's what I got for that. So uh, thank you, everybody, for listening to another deep dive of a weird word. Yeah. We appreciate you coming. We appreciate you even more that you stayed after we named the word. Yeah. For sure. I've been Emily, and you've been Kyle, and this has been Butter No Parsnips. See you next time. Thank you for listening to Butter No Parsnips. Butter No Parsnips is produced by Seth Glicksman, Emily Moyers, and Kyle Imperator. The theme music and additional music is by Kyle Imperator. If you liked listening to this episode, subscribe and give us a good rating and or positive review wherever you heard it. If you really liked listening, consider donating to our Patreon at patreon.com slash butternoparsnips. There you can get bonus content you can't get anywhere else, like the monthly Patreon-exclusive podcast Buttered Parsnips, where this month Kyle and Emily talk about the origins of the show and the meaning of its title. Your support means the world to us and encourages us to keep making more. Thanks in advance and we'll We'll be back next week.